Hi, I'm David Maldo, and this is another advanced tutorial for those of you who are using OBS to up your game in live video meetings, live streams, and webinars. In this tutorial, I want to show you one of the cooler techniques that I use, which is how to skew something to give it a 3D effect. Now, there's probably a million ways this can be implemented into your presentations. I'm going to show you a few samples just to give you the idea. The first one is the whiteboard that I use for my PowerPoint presentation. Let me bring it out here. And you can see what I did here. It's, it's skewed so that it looks like it's actually on this board. It makes the whole space look a little bit more uh, three-dimensional. Now, I, I don't use this to actually present. I want people to be able to, to, I want people to, be able to see my, my content. So I go to a view like this when I'm actually presenting so that people can, can read all my bullet points. But to start things out, this is fun. This is unique. This is different. This stands out. It's memorable. It's a great way to start out the presentation. The next one's really fun. Instead of skewing something within the scene, I'm going to skew my entire virtual office. Here I am. This nice lady is, uh, is watching my stream. Now, this is something I don't use for a big part of my presentations. I, I prefer to be full size or have my content full size. But as a reference, part of a joke, or just a transition, something like this is fun. Something that might be a little bit more useful is a mocked up billboard. If you're talking to your marketing team and you want to see what something's going to look like, or actually if you're thinking big and you want to go to Times Square, <laughs> uh, why not put yourselves there? This is just a great, fun way to visually drive a point home and make an impact. So for the last example, I'm going to bring friends into the screen with me and skew it to make it a more 3D space. So what I'm doing here, this isn't the tutorial yet, but just to quickly explain, I have OBS on my main screen, I have Microsoft Teams on my second screen, and I have Katie and Rachel on Microsoft Teams and I'm bringing them in. And just by skewing them a little bit, not so that they look weird, but just, just enough to give it a 3D effect, I think this makes this more compelling, whether it be for serious panel discussions or I kind of love the idea of doing a game show. You know, when someone wants to speak, you can bring them forward. This, so I just did that using the move technique in the previous uh, tutorial. I'll put a link in the description. And everyone can kind of have their turn, um, have their say. And I, again, it just makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more immersive, a little bit more engaging than the typical video meetings that we're all used to. So now before we start the tutorial, just a quick word from our sponsors. Holly has a long-standing relationship with Microsoft over 15 years. And this relationship keeps going strong to this day. Now with Microsoft Teams. Holly has a variety of great quality products that work flawlessly in Microsoft Teams meeting and calling. As a daily Polygear user, I'm using a Poly Studio P15 for today's tutorial. And all the techniques in this video work seamlessly in Microsoft Teams meetings. The P15 has exceptional optics, powerful audio, automatic camera framing, and cutting edge noise blocking tech giving you the freedom to move and command the conversation. The sleek bar is simple to set up and is Microsoft Teams certified, which means video callers can expect a certain level of experience when using the camera for MS Teams calls. The Poly Studio P15 is also certified for Teams rooms for meeting room use and is an ideal solution for a focus room for one or two people. In fact, Poly has a range of conferencing cameras certified for Microsoft Teams rooms all providing automatic camera framing technology. Besides the focus room kit with Studio P15, they have the small room kit with Poly Studio R30, medium room kit with the Studio USB bar, and large room kit with Studio E70 camera. To learn more about the Poly conferencing cameras available for Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Teams rooms, and to see my full review of the Studio P15, check out the links in the description. So let me show you how to create your own 3D SKUs. While it is an advanced technique, it's not actually that hard. The plugin does most of the work for you. So let's start by downloading the plugin. The plugin we're using for this is called StreamFX. I'm gonna share three links with you. The first link is to their wiki, which is right here. A StreamFX is an interesting plugin. It's a, it's more like a suite of plugins. It does a, a, a bunch of different things. We might go into some more of it in future tutorials, but the one we're the one we're talking about here is the 3D transform. So I'm also sharing the installation guide. There's not that much. I think most of you will do the automated installation. So just read this little section. It just says when a, a certain pop-up comes up comes up, you say for all users, and then it'll install correctly. And 
I'll share the link to the uh, the uh, the actual release. And again, I think most of you will just be using down here the Windows EXE uh, to to automatically install it. And if you are using something else, check the installation guide. But then again, I think if you're using something fancy, you probably know what you're doing. So assuming you've downloaded and installed it, let's switch over to our view inside OBS. Okay, so here we are inside of OBS. And this is an advanced tutorial, so I'm assuming you know the basics of scenes and sources. And if not, I suggest you watch one of my beginner tutorials. I'll put a link in the description below. So first thing, if we look up at the top, there should be a tab for StreamFX. It has some links for support and updates. If you don't see the tab there, please go back to the instructions and follow the instructions on how to install until, until it shows up there. I'll go through two examples. First, I'll put something on the whiteboard here and then I'll put this entire scene up on a billboard. Okay, so let me move myself away a little bit over here so you can see what's going on. And the whiteboard is just a transparent PNG image. I found it on one of those free images, no copyright sites on the internet. I didn't skew it, I didn't do anything to it. It just came like this. So let's add my PowerPoint. I have PowerPoint open on my second monitor. So in my sources down here, I'm going to add a display capture. Call it monitor two and select monitor two and here we have my PowerPoint so using the normal OBS tools I can resize this to put it somewhat over my whiteboard but that's not gonna fool anyone we can even get it a little closer we can if you hold down the shift button with OBS and grab one of the corners you can stretch it out to get it close to the same shape but again this isn't this isn't really giving me the full effect. We need to add the skew filter. So first, before we do that, let me just make sure that it covers all of the whiteboard. You'll see that when we skew it, we, could, we can kind of bend the corners in, but we can't really pull them out. So this has to be bigger. That looks good. Next, I right click on the source, monitor two, and click filters. And the top filter on the list is 3D transform. Okay, now let me move this over so we can see what we're doing. The mode options, you want corner pin. The other, mo the other modes are, are more difficult to get the same effect. Corner pin lets us just move the corners. So let's start with our top left corner. Kind of move the X over, move the Y over, pretty close. Top right, move the X around there. Move it over a little more. Right there, pretty good. Bottom left. And bottom right. Okay. Normally I think I would spend a little more time making it a little perfect, but this is pretty good. This is pretty close. I'm happy with this. And that's it. I told you it was pretty simple once we would actually get to it. That's really all there is to it. Close this. And here we have our, our 3D perspective. Well, actually, one other thing I will do is in front of my hand. I don't want that. I'll move this monitor down below my webcam and right above the whiteboard. So now position correctly and put myself back. And there we have it. And now for the second example, I'm going to take this entire scene and skew that within a billboard. So let's create a second scene and we'll call this um, main scene in billboard. And the first thing I'll get is my image, which is a, a media source, it's just an uh, MP4 file. We'll set it to loop. And there it is. Now the next thing we need to add is the scene. And this is pretty cool. This is called nested scenes. You can put one scene within another scene and there's a lot of creative stuff you could do with that. So I'll go to add a source just like any other source. And one of the source options is theme, just as if it was any other source. I'm gonna choose my main scene. It's the only scene we have so far. And here it is. But unlike when I was actually in the main scene, 
when I'm here with, with the main scene as a source, I can move this around and everything inside of it moves and stays in place. This entire scene is now just a source. So now we go through the same steps we went with the, with the whiteboard to skew it. We cover up our billboard. We use the shift key to kind of get as close as we can here. But make sure we have everything covered. And then we run into a little issue. We can't actually put the, the 3D filter on this. Otherwise, we're putting the 3D filter on our main scene. This is our main scene. We don't want it skewed and, and looking crazy when we go back to it. We have to do another trick, which is called group. We highlight main scene and we click group selected items. Now we only have one item selected, so there's only gonna be one item in this group. And we're gonna call it main scene skew. Now this is a little, you know, I think this is a little out of left field. Why am I creating groups? The reason I can do, the reason I'm doing that is now I can apply the filter to this group without messing up our scene. So I select main scene skew our group, right click it, click filters, add the 3D transform. And from here, it's just the same as, as we did before. I'll start with the top left corner. Move over the top right corner. Bottom left. And the bottom right. So one last thing. You'll notice that there were these railings in front of this billboard and they're gone now. I'm covering them up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this group, the main scene skew, below the billboard. And this is just a default OBS thing. I'm going to add a uh, chroma key filter. I'm going to get, get rid of the green. So right click billboard, filters, effect filters, chroma key. This isn't a plugin or anything special. This is part of vanilla OBS. And there are all sorts of settings in here to make it look better if it's not looking right. But with that shade of green, default works fine. When I close this, here we go. Now we have the full effect. I'm skewed. My PowerPoint is skewed within the skew. We got a double skew going. I'm behind the railings of of the um, of this of this billboard. The, the effect is complete. And if I go back to my main scene, everything still is okay here. This whole scene isn't skewed because I use the group. So I hope you find this helpful, and I hope you get creative and come up with with your own ideas for this. If you come up with something cool, please share a link in the comments. I want to see what you're doing with this, and um, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.